<laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. So back here again, Dr. Nikita Wisniak with the amazing therapist, Leanne. Leanne. And we are going to take you guys through blood supply of the upper extremity here really quickly. In fact, we'll even go into the head and neck a little bit as well. This is designed to help you with your exams, any testing you might have to do, whether it's boards or in the classroom. Hopefully you find this useful. So to start with, let's go upper extremity blood supply. So we can take our arm and put it out to the side like this. We've got a heart on this side, and it's going to have an aorta that branches off slightly to the right-hand side is what it does. On this side, she's got a brachiocephalic artery. On the other side, there is no brachiocephalic artery, and then I get two branches off the brachiocephalic. I get the common carotid that's going to go up to the neck. We'll come back to that one in a little bit. And I also get the subclavian artery that runs underneath the clavicle and continues down the arm. It goes subclavian, is going to become axillary, is going to become brachial, it's all the same tube, don't get confused. Off of that, there's gonna be an anterior and posterior humeral circumflex. There's gonna be collateral and recurrent arteries later on that create an anastomosis, not a big deal. The main blood supply coming down is the brachial artery. Just as an interesting fun fact, when you get your blood pressure checked, what do we actually do? We take and squeeze the arm to occlude the brachial artery and wait for it to start to open and blood coming back through is how we actually measure blood pressure. The brachial artery comes down, it's going to divide into a ulnar and radial artery, and those are going to continue all the way down into the hand this way. They're going to create little arches that run all the way through here, and you can take a pulse of these just over top of the radius, and the one that's a little bit more tricky is over top of the ulna, but a radial pulse is usually fairly easy to get, and she's got a good strong heart rate right there. She's alive, okay? <laughs> what else? I can also take a pulse if I wanted on the medial side of the arm where I would sink between the biceps and brachialis and the triceps into this soft spot right here, and you can also get a pulse right there. So that's going to be the blood flow down. How does the blood flow come back? You really have two main choices. There's a basilic and cephalic veins that are gonna carry the blood back up towards the head. So the blood is returning back up. Cephalic vein is in here between your pec major and your deltoid running up and diving in. The basilic is a little bit deeper running down and also going to run in. Once you, get up in, once you get up here into the shoulder, what's going to happen is it follows the same as the arterial supply did for the veins. So it goes axillary vein, then it goes subclavian vein, then it goes into the brachiocephalic vein, and the brachiocephalic vein is going to go into the superior vena cava and then drain back into the heart. So that would be blood supply for the upper extremity. And then we can get crazy. If you want to get crazy blood supply for the head and neck, th this, this is going to get crazy, right? So let's have you turn, we'll have her turn to the side just a little bit so we can see this. So a couple of key things here. We're looking at arterial supply up, and then we'll take the venous pathway back down. So main thing that you get here is you come off, common carotid artery is going to branch into internal and external carotid arteries. The internal carotid artery has no branches until you get up into the brain, into the cranium, cranial vault. The external carotid artery, though, has all kinds of branches. A couple of key branches you might want to be aware of, superior thyroid artery comes off, the lingual artery, the facial artery comes off of that. You can also see things like superficial temple, temporal artery comes off. If you're looking for a pulse, you can take a carotid pulse on one side. You can also take a superficial temporal pulse with your fingers over top like that. And basically what happens for this artery is it sends off all branches around the head that supply superficial structures all the way through this region. Then it's going to join into capillary beds that come back and drain through venous structures. The main venous drainage of the external blood supply of your head comes from the external jugular vein, usually superficial and running down. It's going to join into the superior vena cava eventually. The more important blood supply for us to get, though, is how does it supply into your brain? And that's from the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery travels up, goes through the carotid canal, and it's going to branch into three main branches. It is crucial you know these three main branches. The first branch is the anterior cerebral artery. The second branch is the middle cerebral artery. And the third branch running posterior is the posterior communicating artery that's gonna eventually reach the posterior cerebral artery. But there's another blood supply that runs up into the head here as well, and it's from the vertebral artery. Off of your subclavian artery, the vertebral artery runs up through, and this is a common board exam question. Everybody asks you on this. What goes through a transverse foramen of cervical vertebrae? It is the vertebral artery running up, where it's going to join into the basilar artery, and that's going to make up your circle of Willis where it met the blood supply from the anterior, from the internal carotid artery. So those two structures come in, and they basically send branches that go all the way up and around the brain, eventually into capillary beds, and they drain into main veins of your brain. What are the main veins of your brain? The first one is going to be superior sagittal sinus and inferior sagittal sinus. 
Then you have a straight sinus. They meet at the back of the skull with a confluence of sinuses. Those two sinuses run together into a transverse sinus, sigmoid sinus, through your jugular foramen, and it becomes the jugular vein. Jugular veins drain down into the left and right brachiocephalic veins. Those go into the superior vena cava and drain back into your heart. It sounds like a lot of words. If you actually say it out loud a few times, you'll get it and understand it well. I would encourage you all to draw the pathways out to really understand it. The only other thing I'm going to say on this is a common question that gets asked is, there is a right brachiocephalic vein, there is a left brachiocephalic vein. There is a right brachiocephalic artery, but there is no left brachiocephalic artery. Please make sure you recognize that. Uh, just as some bonus material, what are we going to do here? We're going to cover arterial pathways in the lower extremity. So a couple of key things to get if you're tracing arterial pathways. The way that I like to teach this is I like you to visualize your red blood cell. And how does this red blood cell travel down the body to the distal ends and how does it get back up the body? So we're going to trace a red blood cell. So if you want, you can close your eyes and listen to the wonderful sound of my voice or you can observe as we go through the pictures, whatever works better for you. Okay, fantastic. So to start with, we have our abdominal aorta. Well, if you want to take it way back, we've got the heart slightly on the left-hand side here. Aorta would come down all the way through and branch into the common iliac arteries and then the common iliac arteries are going to go internal iliac and external iliac. External iliac is going to run down, and once it crosses the inguinal ligament, it's going to become the femoral artery. The femoral artery is kind of neat. It sends some branches off that go around the femoral neck. It also sends a deep artery of the femur, or profundus artery of the femur, that's going to go back and supply your hamstring muscles, and going through the adductor magnus muscle. But if we follow the femoral artery itself, it goes down through the adductor hiatus right here, and then it becomes a posterior structure. We'll have the spin around here for us. It becomes a posterior structure, where it becomes the popliteal artery. And the popliteal artery is going to have geniculate arteries that branch off and create an anastomosis around the knee. The popliteal artery is also going to continue down and become three different branches, the posterior tibial, the anterior tibial, and the fibular artery. And all three of those are going to travel down. Now, there's a couple of neat places where you can check some pulses. So help me on spin back around here. So first place that you can check a pulse is you can actually get a popliteal pulse. You can get a femoral pulse. All those are available. If you were really doing this in practice, the patient would be laying down to make it easier for you. The other place you can find a pulse, if you're asked to do it on a practical exam, behind the medial malleolus will be where the tibial pulse is located. And then the dorsal pedal pulse, which is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery, will be found on the dorsum of the foot at this location. And then we get the dorsal arches and the plantar arches as well as branches off of these, but interesting for you to see. And that would be the simple pathway down for the blood. Blood is going to go through a capillary bed and it's going to travel back up. And it has a couple of choices, but the main choice, most of the blood, what does it wind up going through? It travels through the greater saphenous vein, up the leg here, behind the knee, comes all the way up, eventually to the femoral triangle, where the greater saphenous vein will meet the femoral vein that was taking blood that was located deep inside the leg all the way back up and then you go femoral vein underneath the inguinal ligament and it becomes the external iliac joins up to the common iliac and eventually joins up to the inferior vena cava and that takes you all the way back up to the heart and hopefully you found this useful and you can use it in practice or you can use it for, for exam studying or board exams and we thank you very much for your time <laughs> okay double thumbs up okay good job thanks awesome.